and gentlemen, here we have our next little art assignment for you guys. So this next art assignment is going to involve two different things, but they come together pretty nicely. So what we have for you today is looking at depth and balance. So I got a few examples here, uh, one being kind of a very simple optical illusion there on the left of your screen. You'll see those squares, right? going into that midpoint, kind of showing like there's some depth in that image, going deep down, like there's square wells. Uh, then we also have the one just next to it with the rocks. That's showing, again, depth as well, because again, you have a rock in the background, a rock, rock in the foreground, in the front, and one kind of in the midground. And you have a cliff as well. So this is showing an aspect of, again, uh, depth in an image. So we're creating depth in a two-dimensional space. Uh, same with our squiggly lines here on the right. So those colorful lines, uh, some of the areas are again darkened in and they're layered underneath so it creates an illusion of depth. And then over on the right, that's looking a little bit about balancing an image and of course also still creating depth. So that one there kind of shows a bit of both. So we're going to talk about both of these two concepts here in a second. So some classic examples of depth perception. We have uh, a very easy study you guys can try out just to practice, which involves just doing some spheres and then picking a light source, so maybe from one side of your page, and then putting a bit of shadows and making them smaller and smaller as they go into the background. Uh, some other classic ones, of course, walking through a tunnel. Um, then we also have the lines that are all shaded in on the left side there on that image with kind of like the colorful one on the previous page. Uh, tree lines, that's a really good way of showing depth as well, so we can see those trees there. And then of course mountain ranges. You can have of course the mountains fading off into the distance, or of course shrinking in size or getting bigger depending on how you want to represent them. So again, these are some different ways of playing around with depth to give you guys some ideas. Now when we're talking balance, right, we're either thinking symmetrical or asymmetric. So with symmetrical, you guys both know both sides, right, are going to be the same, like that middle image right there of that swirling sun and the two capsules around it. Uh, same with the left image there of the two flamingos, right, it's fairly balanced. It's very symmetrical. Now if we look at the two images on the right, we have, of course, those uh, one with the tree and four trees, that one's asymmetrical. And then especially with uh, that colored image just below that, with all those zigzagged lines, it's still trying to kind of create depth with color, which is kind of interesting. And it's also fairly asymmetrical. Sides of this don't match up. It, it's not a balanced work. So your job for today is to make sure you do a drawing that includes some depth, right? You can show it in any which way you want, but you want to make sure you either have symmetry or an asymmetrical piece of work. And again, just write real quick, um, that on the back if it's symmetrical or if it's asymmetric. Okay, so that's your task. This one will uh, this one will be due next week. And just as a reminder as well, you guys still have your proportion one to hand in for Friday. So if you haven't finished your spooky proportions um, with the people drawn up, and then of course you did uh, a version with a costume. If you don't have those submitted by Friday, it's not going to be good. Okay, so make sure you get those done. Well, until uh, next class. Happy drawing.